Good day, welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today we want to take a look at the believer's baptism. Water baptism. Acts chapter 8 verse 36 through 38. It says, while they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. The official said, look, here is water. What is stopping me from being baptized? Then the official ordered the chariot to stop. Both Philip and the official went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord took Philip away. The official continued on his way. He was very happy. So we saw Philip explaining to this eunuch the way of salvation. He must have also explained to him that he need to be baptized in water and he needed to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So what does baptism mean to the believer? as we look at the eunuch's baptism today. To baptize means to dip or to immerse, to plunge or to cover, to sink, to make completely wet. We saw when Jesus was beginning his earthly ministry, he went to John the Baptist to be baptized in the river Jordan. He was immersed in water by John. So the baptism of the eunuch, which we will consider, is one of the many indications that Christian, Christians or believers need to be baptized. This was taught and this was practiced by the early church According to Acts 2, verse 38, we see Peter, when those people get converted, were baptized. We will see it also as we see in today's lesson and in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. This is a public confession of identification with Jesus Christ through baptism. Baptism invariably followed conversion. Acts 2 verse 41, Acts 8 verse 12, Acts 18 and verse 8. Baptism is also for men as well as women, for Jews as well as Gentiles. Acts 4 and verse 48, sorry, Acts 10 and verse 48. We also see where entire household received the Lord Jesus Christ and were baptized. We see the Philippian jailer when Paul and Silas was in jail and the jailer took them home after they were beaten. They heard the word of God. They believed what Paul said and the entire household was baptized. They were saved. And we saw that in Acts chapter 16, verse 31 through 34. We, it is implied that all the members of the household believe. It is, now, it is not stated that infants were baptized. We have instances where people baptize infants. But we are not talking about infants being baptized. We are talking about people who have the knowledge of saving grace, those who can confess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to identify with him and they are baptized. We also see that the believers that were baptized, they were baptized very soon after their conversion. In Acts chapter 8 and 36, as we see the Ethiopian eunuch, in Acts chapter 9, verse 18, we saw Saul becoming Paul. 
he believed received his sight and was baptized again we talk about the philippian jailer in Acts 16 verse 33 and 34 he and his entire household was baptized the same night these believers professed faith in christ there was no probationary period for these people that are here mentioned they, they didn't wait for them to manifest the reality of their profession why because there was so much persecution that people were not just uh, taking a chance to merely profess Christ to identify with him in baptism because they too would be persecuted so they did not take uh, this as a light matter just to say I'm professing Christ because they could have lost their lives so they were genuine in professing faith and in being baptized the threat of persecution caused this restraint from people to take their profession lightly they were serious about their new identity with Jesus Christ. But we also say in an exceptional case, in the case of Simon, we see also what happened in baptism. It didn't have saving value because we realize now that Simon was not really saved. He professed he professed that he was identifying with Christ, but he didn't really possess Christ as a savior of his life. So we see that um, being baptized, it doesn't have the saving value. And Acts 8 and 13 shows, even after saying Simon, saying he was saved and he was baptized he was still poisoned with bitterness and jealousy bound by iniquity his heart was not right in the sight of god the mode of baptism as we say earlier was immersion acts 8 uh, verse 38 through 39 both philip and the eunuch went down into the water and they both came up out of the water so immersion was the practice of the early church it was the practice of the disciples jesus said in saint matthew 28 and verse 19 that when they believe they also should be baptized so we are saying um, whether you say I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit, they are baptized. They are identifying with the Trinity. And if, like we see in the scripture, it says baptize in the name of Jesus, it's just to let these people know that the baptism you're taking onto yourself is now that you are identifying with Jesus whom first and foremost you didn't believe in, that he was the Christ, that he is the Son of God. But it means that when we become believers by the scriptures, it is saying we should be baptized, immersed in water, to show publicly our identification with Christ. And of course, we can or will receive the Holy Spirit either before baptism or sometimes after baptism but this is also a baptism that every believer should also seek for it is a gift from God and we say to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit this is subsequent to having a clean heart we see the other people there had received the Holy Spirit except Simon. Why? Because he did not possess a clean heart. So God bless you today as we continue to trust him.
to teach others to come to Christ and to teach them that they too must be baptized in water. And if they have not yet received the Holy Spirit, then we can teach them how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God bless you again today. Happy, happy, happy Saturday. Thank you again for watching. God bless the USA. And happy Juneteenth. <laughs>